Okay. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm going to talk to you about a slightly different topic today, about uh, automatic rhythm generation, uh, something I've been interested in uh, recently, actually since the finishing of my, my dissertation in 2005, uh, in getting uh, generative music systems going on to, to use in performance and um, in other in other things. And uh, this, I'm actually pleased to acknowledge George Sioras and Ril Zappel, who are here today as well, and uh, they were part of this, uh, this project. So this project was, um, this was a funded project in Portugal at the Inesco Porto Sound and Music Computing Group, uh, co-funded by Fabian Guillaume and myself. And this was a project that went on from 2009 until 2011. And um, the idea of the project, well, there's three PIs <coughs> of this project were all composers. It was uh, myself, Bruce Pennycook from the University of Texas at Austin, and Tomás Henriques. Uh, Bruce, as you may know, uh, is one of the, the forerunners in interactive music systems. Tomás Henriques has worked um, in creating alternative controllers uh, for music making. So basically, with this um, project, we wanted to create a, um, a toolbox for Max MSP in order to create uh, with algorithms for generative music. Uh, we found that this could have interesting applications uh, in interactive installations, music for games. Uh, at the time, Spore was coming out, and Spore had this uh, automatic generated uh, music. And we were very interested about the possibilities of, you know, embedding these, uh, these systems in, in gaming. Um, and the focus was basically on the real-time adaptability of these algorithms. Uh, for uh, real-time composition and establish a new paradigm for sequencing. I'm going to tell you about uh, that shortly. So what is real-time composition? This is something I've been interested on uh, and it's my definition. It's a compositional practice utilizing interactive music systems in which generative algorithms with a non-deterministic behavior are utilized and transformed by the user during performance. And this resonates with Joel Chad of his idea of interactive composition and also with Heinrich Tauber's idea of uh, composing at the metal level. Basically, um, when you're doing real-time composition, you're just articulating in time generative algorithms that have some sort of musical behavior and you can, and they have a non-deterministic output, so uh, they will make you interact as, as they go along. Um, I think this is an emerging practice and interestingly, uh, there are several games these days that uh, use this. I don't know if you are aware of Bloom, uh, this application for iOS uh, devised by um, Brian Eno and Peter Schilbers. Electroplankton is a game for Nintendo DS um, that was created by Toshiro Y. Give Me the Blue is actually one of the games our team developed in the, the framework of this project. And it's also um, an application for iOS, and uh, you can actually generate blues in real time by playing piano and a trumpet against a uh, bass. And, uh, and drums accompaniment there are, um, that are being played. So um, this, I'm going to introduce some of the applications shortly. A new paradigm is in sequencing. We thought that's probably about the time that people stop cutting and pasting uh, loops when they're sequencing because, I mean, if you've done that, you know this is a lot of work. And uh, we thought that maybe using generative um, music systems, you could start doing sequencing in a completely different way. Um, namely, for example, programming a sequencer to just, as, as if you would talk to a musician that sits on with the session with you, it's like, well, play more stuff here, now syncopate a little bit more, uh, do a break there, whatever. Um, I don't know if you're aware of smart garage band instruments, there's the, the version of garage band for iPad and, uh, and iPod. It has gone a long way this way because now you can actually use uh, in a drum set, several parts of the drum set, you can just, you have this plane of uh, loud and soft and complex and simple and you can actually play with these and generate rhythms like that. Um, our idea is go to actually go a bit further to have these artificial performers that can generate music you know, in a certain style that are programmable and, I mean, they themselves know how to make slight changes appropriately when, when they're playing. So same, uh, same idea of when uh, you're playing with your band, the same tune, you know, from performance to performance, you get slight <coughs> um, changes in the performer, which are, of course, musically acceptable. And this is a real change <laughs> challenge when you're working with computers and trying to make this work in a, um, 
in this artificial environment. So what did we do for automatic rhythm generator generation? We built two applications. One's called the Kin Rhythmicator. Uh, and the Kin Rhythmicator generates the rhythm on a meter at the metrical subdivision that is uh, given by the user. And the user can control parameters in real time, such as density, amount of syncopation, amount of variation, and uh, metricity, which is basically the um, strength of the magical accent. Uh, so in this application, for example, you are in 4-4. Four, four. You can have like a syncopated rhythm in 4-4, four, four, just uh, all of a sudden make it gradually non-metrical and then re-emerge, for example, as a 7-8. Uh, have the syncopated or not. You can do those things. Uh, the Kindle Combinator recombines basically mid drum loops of the same style. There's something uh, that we found out. It would be an interesting thing to have, for example, to deal with those uh, batch of uh, MIDI loops that, uh, that appear in GarageBand and Logic. You have like the 10 different loops of the same style. And probably instead of doing the cut and paste, it would be interesting to just have them, the computer just uh, mix in them according to what you, you want them to do and according to the degree of complexity. So you could just say, okay, just play simple here and just play more complex there and basically program these things. So the Kin Rhythmicator. The Kin Rhythmicator takes a point of departure. Clarence Barlow's is, um, metric indispensability algorithm, so an algorithm that's in 1987. And um, this is a very interesting algorithm because first of all, it stratifies meter as a product of uh, prime factors and gives you what Clarence calls an indispensability score for each one of the pulses present. So for example, if you want to start to stratify uh, measure three, four, the sixth node level, you would get the prime factors three times two times two, and this is, gives you the order actually of the stratification because you have three quarter notes that subdivide into two eighth notes, which in turn subdivide into two sixteenth notes, each one of them the eighth note, and the six eight, which has a number of pulses at the sixteenth note level as the, as the three four, would just basically stratify into two because it's a duple meter, then the subdivide into three uh, eighth notes, which in turn subdivide each eighth note into two sixteenth notes. So the formula just gives you all these ah, there you go. indispensability scores, which are uh, the values to make these pulses indispensable so that you feel, to, so that you have the feel of, of this meter. And it actually works. I'm going to show you it's like the, the graphic rendering of the two situations. So here you see that in the, the three, four, you have one. The, the next strong one to pass the algorithm is uh, third beat, and then two, and then you have this hierarchy. And in six, eight, you have beat one, beat two, and these are internal hierarchies <coughs> in between. This is very interesting, for example, in relationship to Lerl and Jack and proposal of the magical strata, because at least in this, uh, in this algorithm, you get a hierarchy that is set up for all the, all the pulses in that meter. So the way we do uh, use this is that you get probabilistic weights that we would attribute to the um, indispensability scores according to their stratification level. And this is a hack that was implemented by George Sioros so that uh, you can uh, control density in a, in a very elegant way because this, when, when you want like less dense uh, rhythms, it actually favors the strongest metrical positions. And this also has a very simple graphic interface. That's one of the things that I uh, was asking George actually to develop so that we should have this, this um, very simple interface in which you could just navigate your rhythm because this would be supposed to, to, um, to work in real time. So here, you can control density. Here, uh, you can just you know, control the amount of syncopation, the amount of variation, and uh, the, the strength of the metrical accent. And here, you can control basically the amplitude um, differences between the strongest and, um, 
and softest events. I have a small demonstration here to show to you. And this is uh, the rhythmic care implemented as a, as a live device. So this is the single sync played without the rhythmicator. Once you bring the rhythmicator in, start generating rhythm of those two uh, pitches. that you know over time you could just tell that this brain is very you know in your time The recombinator. <laughs> um, the recombinator actually combines, basically recombines portions of loops uh, that have slight variations in um, in time and does the cut and pasting for you, you know, in a smart way. So we, we just decided to just sort these loops according to this degree of complexity. Uh, and this that takes into account syncopation, density, and amplitude variation. And this is again a syncopation measure that uh, was developed by George uh, and myself, but takes into, it's more or less the longer Higgins and Lee um, algorithm to measure syncopation. This one takes also into account, you know, isolated events that are weak in, in that are in weak metrical positions. So this would be, you know, the scores for syncopation if they show up. Uh, isolated, but also takes into account amplitude variation. So that when we have, and that uh, the longer he is in Lee doesn't do that, when you have um, sequences that have like isochronous events but have the same accentuations and they are syncopated, that takes that into account as well. <clears throat> so our syncopation measure you know, works with dynamic accents, drum rolls or arpeggios in real time, and MIDI from actual performances. And we have two applications that do that. One's a King uh, Recombinator, the other one is an interactive music system that was developed by George and was presented recently at uh, Izmir, uh, after last year's Izmir. And you can see here the syncopation measures is some work done by Andre Ozafel, trying to figure out uh, syncopation levels at um, <coughs> various uh, parts of uh, this MIDI rendering of a funk tune. And you can see here, it's one of the interesting things you can see here is that this takes into account the scores of this, uh, the syncopation as measured and the sum of it. And over here, basically, you sum all the signals and you get much less syncopation. And I found out from that that, you know, current state of the art algorithms for audio are not able yet to, to figure out syncopation because you have this very even surface of events. So even though you have slight accents, it's still very hard to, with, with real audio data, um, to find out, uh, to determine syncopation. So the root combinator basically loops them, uh, sorts them according to, to their complexity. Again, we have a very simple interface. This is the interface for the root combinator. Thank you. <coughs> and uh, you just throw your, your loops here, and then you just drag this slider from simple to complex, and you just, uh, you know, 
when, when you wish in, uh, and in real time. And the way this works, I'm going to show the next slide actually, it illustrates this better. So you have this recombination bit length. Suppose that you have like three loops, uh, being this the, the most complex of the three. This is this, uh, the simplest. So basically, when, when you open the range for recombination, what it does is just picks, you know, uh, bits from each one of the sequences, and you get uh, these recombined versions at the end. I also have a video example for you of this. So here you see you can grab your favorite media loop folder into the, the system. When you don't open the range slider, basically it's playing the, um, the loop that it has associated to it. So a recent application is this uh, interactive uh, music system driven by syncopation that was presented last, last year's MIR, and basically can capture MIDI in real time and measure the syncopation uh, with this application called Keen Syncopation. It basically implements the algorithm. And uh, the Keen Rhythm Control maps the, the density of events and the syncopation to parameters to control the Keen Rhythmicator. So you can play, you know, in a MIDI path or something, or as long as you get your, your data converted into MIDI, um, you can play with a Rhythmicator <coughs> in real time and make the Rhythmicator react to, uh, to what you're doing. So that's basically, you know, in a nutshell, what, what we've been doing in Porto. Uh, future work, um, there's three things, I think. Uh, further and finer control syncopation, and this is uh, George Sioros' uh, doctoral research work. Uh, who's been recently successfully defended his proposal, dissertation proposal. Improve the complexity measurements. So one thing we, figure, we figured out is that, you know, even though you measure syncopation and, and amplitude variation, there's probably other things that, take, uh, that make you feel that something is complex because we didn't get a uh, very interesting result. Well, we got, uh, as you saw, some successes with what I just showed to you, but there's other types of loops that doesn't work that well. And um, the other thing would be to generate rhythms in different styles because uh, Clarence's algorithm is very agnostic. Basically, it gives you this generic meter that you feel, but I mean, you cannot tell the rhythmic cater, well, generate me samba in 5-4. And that's our next step. Let's try to figure out, you know, uh, what to take into account to generate rhythm in different styles. Uh, this has several advantages, I think that's uh, we should probably follow this archetype approach, and this is my personal idea to develop in the future. And I think there probably will be three uh, simple elements that uh, you take into account when you, when you make your mental uh, uh, description of, of uh, what, what uh, rhythm in a certain style is. And I think one of the things to take into account would be the pattern of accents in the metrical grid. The other thing, microtiming deviations that may be idiosyncratic, like in Samba, for example, you have the 16th notes that approach the triplet in a very peculiar way, and that for generating Samba, of course, should be taken into account. 
And the other thing would be the distribution of the rhythmic components among the spectral bands of uh, high, mid, and low. Uh, one of the things that I noticed, uh, I would assume that we all agree, is that you know, there's like these three, these, these three components in rhythms. You have these high-pitched sounds that in general give you the, the, the subdivision of, of the tempo or the tempo according to the speed. You know this, in the middle register you have, you know, something that it happens uh, in a slightly different way that happens in the, the high register. And the lower register you have the bass that in general uh, gives you, a, it, it has a different behavior from, from what goes in the top. So I, I would like to take a look I mean, especially, you know, in rock rhythms, jazz rhythms, Caribbean rhythms, uh, <coughs> uh, all those South, South American uh, rhythms, you know, that, you know, clearly have this type of distribution, what, what happens so that, you know, in the future you would be able to generate, for example, some rock rhythm that has, you know, it's 50% rock, 30% samba, and 20% salsa. Uh, just, just for the sake of actually exploring rhythm conceptually and have something that you could navigate from like 100% rock to you know 100% salsa passing by samba and do things like this just for the sake of experimenting it you know in performance you know in composition. So I guess that's it. Thank you very much. You can download our software uh, at uh, our website. And uh, I'd like to acknowledge the from the sound for since the for science and technology in Portugal that provided funding for, for this whole project. Thank you.